in Sports News Nigeria Football Federation Technical and Development Committee will meet in Abuja tomorrow to interview three shortlisted persons for the vacant Super Eagles managerial position. The Technical and Development Committee will thereafter forward the name of the successful candidates to the NFF board. Coach Salisu Yusuf, Tom Sofiet, and Frenchman Paul Lugang are candidates in the running for the top job. Chairman of the committee, Barrister Chris Green, insists that the NFF will only settle for candidates they see as most qualified and capable of qualifying the Super Eagles for the 2018 FIFA World Cup Finals in Russia. In the Nigeria Professional Football League, Uche John's 73rd minute goal ensured defending champions Aimba got all three points in a hard 4 2 1 victory over Kano Pillars 2 1 to keep the pressure on the leading pack. Two first half goals from Rivers United gave Stanley Aguma's boys a 2 0 victory over a hapless shooting stars of Ibadan in Port Harcourt. Elsewhere, Ifai Uba Football Club defeated El Kanemi Warriors 1 0 while Lobi Stars defeated Plateau United by the same scoreline. Abia Warriors also defeated Warrior Wolves 1-0, while MFM beat Visiting Heartland 2-0 behind closed doors at the Agege Stadium. Wikitouris got a share of the spoils after playing a 1-0 draw with Niger Tornadoes. Rangers Football Club of Inugu climbed to the top of the league table, courtesy of the 3-2 away win over Aqua United in the Nest of Champions and Wiki Tourist's failure to win against Niger Tornadoes. Host Brazil ran a third security operation simulation for the opening ceremony of the Rio 2016 Olympics less than three weeks from the August 5th celebration at Rio de Janeiro's Maracana Stadium. Federal, state and local security officials took part in the simulation, a sort of dry run that involved transportation and security logistics 19 days from the opening ceremony. More than 250 buses, some of which will be used to bring Olympic athletes to the stadium on the day of the opener, ran pre-planned routes through the city with police escorts and also with armed soldiers and police watching on. This effort involved more than 2,000 people, including military, police, drivers, volunteers and Olympic officials. Tragedy has struck again in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as three police officers were killed and three more injured in a shooting. Police have been able to gun down one suspect and say he was the only one involved in the shooting. They're also warning people to stay away from the scene of the shooting, which is close to the police headquarters and a highway. The local sheriff's department of spokesperson said the incident happened shortly before 9 a.m. local time and was being treated as an active situation with road closures in the area. The Louisiana State Governor, John Bell Edwards, has condemned the attack but has promised the perpetrators would be brought to justice. We don't have any information right now. We're still working the scene. So it's an ongoing scene. We don't have any specific detail as to what transpired. We do know there's a scene over here at the Be Quick uh, station, so we're working that scene. Uh, there's a, uh, a suspect that's down right now. We, we're checking him out. Uh, we're going to make sure there aren't any explosives around. So we're trying to secure the scene before we give any detailed information. The Turkish government says it now has 6,000 suspects in connection with a failed coup on Friday. However, the number of those killed in the clashes has risen to 290. Security forces are reported to have met resistance from some coup plotters who are being arrested. President Tayyip Erdogan has repeatedly accused U.S.-based Turkish cleric Fethullah Gulen of being behind the plot, though he's denied it. There are reports, though, the number of suspects could rise further as the government attempts to clean out what it says are viruses in the country. French police have gathered that the man who ran his truck into a crowd in the city of Nice during Bastille Day celebrations had researched the route before the attack. Luhajet Boulel was shot dead by police when his vehicle's path along the Promenade des Anglais was eventually halted. Local media said CCTV footage released showed him driving through the area in a lorry closely observing the scene. On the day of the attack, Boulez was set to have phoned his brother in Tunisia during the afternoon, sending a photograph of himself among the crowds. France has called up 12,000 police reservists to boost security in the wake of the killings. Meanwhile, Luharej 
Luhaj Bulel's estranged wife, who was detained on Friday, has been released. Those still being held are said to be close associates of the killer, but have not been identified. And the main news again. Residents of Oporaza community in Baramatu Kingdom have been protesting to demand release of some of their youths arrested two weeks ago over connections with the Niger Delta Avengers. The protesters, mostly women, said they've been under the siege of security operatives who have bombarded their communities under the guise of searching for the militants. Also today, Microsoft founder Bill Gates has challenged African leaders to create the right environment for youth innovations to thrive. Mr. Gates gave the charge where he delivered the, gave the, where he delivered the keynote speech at the 14th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture in Pretoria, South Africa, this afternoon. Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, John Oyegun, says his party is yet to get over the loss of the seat of Deputy Senate President to the Opposition People's Democratic Party. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.